So in today's outing, we are going to talk about a new feature, a feature which arises out of our knowledge of uh, kinematics as also the laws of motion, where the force has been defined qualitatively as well as quantitatively, where the interaction of forces has been discussed as in the form of third law. <clears throat> so work, energy, power, action, this, that, that, that. There were so many associated words uh, which we encounter in our life, even if we have not learned ABC of physics. <clears throat> but there is a problem. The problem is in common communication and of course more so in verbal communication. The format of the verbal communication we call it language which there are several thousand languages in which people exchange their ideas, their feelings, this and that. So in that common communication, what energy, power, etc. have some very confusing uh, aspects associated with them. And so that uh, people often, they will debate what they mean by work what they mean by power, the muscle power for example, okay, or uh, the power punch in boxing etc. Uh, that is associated with time. Basically an application of force that was uh, uh, proposed by Aristotle to be the cause of motion but later on challenged by the uh, Renaissance physicists of uh, Europe like Galileo and uh, other followers, great people who define that the force is, what is the force? Force is something which is required to change the state of motion. A state of motion which could be rest in the frame of reference which we have discussed earlier so you have the tools to understand a definite and precise meaning associated with these vague meanings, work, power and energy. For example, if I am carrying a box here, okay, and I'm not moving at all, then there is no movement. And by definition of work that will follow, will say that no work has been done. Even on a railway platform, I'm a coolie. Hmm. Uh, when I was a child, I was very fascinated by the concept of being a coolie. <clears throat> so a coolie takes your luggage and walks on the platform several meters, maybe tens of meters, to translate to transfer your uh, things from one place to another place and of course we pay for him. For what? In the common language for the work that he has done in moving the object from one place to another place or for carrying an object on his head. Are you carrying a uh, whole doll or uh, atashi or a box okay and standing over there you'll say that the work has been done you're sitting on the table working for two three hours and i ask your mother or your father asks your mother he happens to be a physicist by training uh, what is my child doing she will be saying that he has been working for what three hours now and the father will be amazed and uh, he will say but he has not moved at all. So there is a force of course 
of uh, gravitation working on him, a force of reaction of the, of the chair on which he is sitting, but he has been sitting, he has been doing nothing. And so maybe this is going to result in a fight between the mom and dad. Okay? The mom will favor you and say that you have been working. And the dad will say, no, 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 no. And then she will say, go out of the house, you are not worth it. My son has been working, my daughter has been working for such a long time. And your physics says that he has not worked at all. <clears throat> so there are meanings and there are energies associated with work. Uh, and of course, I just define the power as the rate of doing work, which you'll encounter shortly. Now, how does the work arrive? Work is a dot product of two vectors. So, in the absolute terms, we have two vectors A and B. And because I have already dealt with that earlier in one of my lectures, so I am going fast. A and B can be of the same variety and A and B can be of different variety. In the case of work done, one of the vectors is force and the other vector is the corresponding displacement. And the result of these two vectors is that I am getting a scalar which has no direction associated with it. So look here, it's a beauty that two vectors give rise to a scalar, a quantity is scalar. So the dot product will be defined as a dot b is equal to a b cos theta. And if I draw these two vectors on the plane of this board, vector a and vector b with an angle theta here, and make a projection from the head of this vector onto this line, I get a resolved path. If this is b, this is the magnitude of vector b and this is the magnitude of vector a. So I get b cos of theta here. Theta appears to be over here a positive angle, an anti-clockwise angle. Well, we can give that in radians or whatever, degrees, etc. It doesn't matter. It is not very important to us. But what I have done is, here I have translated vector B to this position and translated vector A to this point. So the point of application here and here they are different. But it signifies, denotes the same thing. The angle over here which I have shown is rather negative, a clockwise angle. So why so? Because I define theta as the angle between the, these two vectors in the string a dot b and I say that theta is the angle that the second vector makes with the first vector. So here, the angle that the second vector in the string A and B is uh, this positive angle and here because we are going to talk about B dot A, okay, or the second angle vector, it makes an angle of minus theta, hmm, which is a negative angle here uh, with the first one. <coughs> In B dot A also this angle that is made. So you know that the, the scalar that arrives out of the dot product of these two vectors, which has no direction, this can be obtained as if I draw a B cos of theta on the y axis and A on this axis and then I will get a rectangular uh, kind of a thing and the rectangle will have an area A into B cos of theta. And here in this case, I am having A cos of minus theta is equal to A cos of theta because cos of minus theta is equal to cos of theta. Not like sine of minus theta is equal to minus sine of theta. So friends, 
I find that if I have this a cos of theta and multiply it by the length b, then again I get a rectangular structure and the area of the two structures, two geometrical structures is the same. Okay. Now, to cut the story short and uh, give you some of the results that we have, here I go for a dot b and we could show that a dot b is equal to b dot a because cos of minus theta is equal to cos of theta. So this property is called commutative property that means I can change the position of a from here to here and b back to here. So this is a commutative property which exists for any kind of uh, uh, dot products. Then I have uh, I'm writing a distributive law associated with the vectors. A dot B plus B prime, the two vectors, is equal to A dot B plus A dot B prime. <coughs> that means we distribute this thing and try to understand it as a sum of two distinct things. Uh, a dot b and a dot b prime. Can you tell me uh, the same will be true if uh, I put a minus sign here? Doesn't matter. If I put a minus sign here, then I'll get a minus sign here. Okay? So a plus minus a dot b plus minus b prime turns out to be like this. Now, <coughs> In this distributive law, I have taken this as the two vectors. Normally in books, you, if you find that the distributive law is described as a dot b plus c, a dot b, a dot c. But instead of taking it as b and c, I have taken it as b and b dash, b prime. Now I, I challenge you to tell me why I have been careful enough to put values like this? The answer is very simple. One of the things which we miss in, uh, and you might have, even if I told you, you might have missed it, that these two vectors, there is a summation or there is a subtraction. For adding two vectors, are subtracting one vector from the other, are adding so many vectors, subtracting some of them, the, there is a condition. The unwritten law in vectors. The unwritten law is that in summation or in subtraction, all the vectors should be of the same variety. Hmm? If this is Rizvi, this has to be Rizvi, from the same family. If this is Gupta, it has to be Gupta. If this is Pande, it has to be Pande, of the same variety, of the same group. Then we obtain another quick result. This I didn't do for you before, that a dot lambda b is equal to lambda. I can take it out, a dot b. Here, lambda has to be a real number. Okay. We also said, we also found that a dot a is equal to a square. Why? Because its value will be equal to a into a into cos of the angle between the two of them and the angle between two same vectors is always equal to zero. Okay. So cos zero is equal to one and therefore a like this. And we use it very often. We'll use it today also. <coughs> Now, for these vectors, I want to express a vector as, say, a vector a is equal to, uh, then we take the help of what, what are known as the unit vectors, and I have just shown you the uh, orthogonal coordinate system, x, y in this plane, and z coming out of this plane. And 
I have shown just the positive directions. The opposite directions are the negative directions. Okay. So I have shown you the unit vector i cap, j cap and k cap we have learned before that and the magnitude of all these vectors is equal to 1. <clears throat> okay. I will not write that uh, magnitude of i cap is equal to i. Magnitude of j cap is equal to j. No, 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 no. Um, magnitude of k cap is equal to k. No, no, no. Although for this magnitude of b I will write it b. Magnitude of a I will write it a. But not in the case of these vectors because magnitude of all these vectors is equal to 1. Later on we found and I introduced to you and I just am revising for us. We must know that i cap i is equal to j cap j is equal to k cap k is equal to 1. Why? Because the angle between the pair of vectors here, here and here is equal to 0 and cos of 0 is equal to 1. i dot j as you can see here the angle is 90 degrees. j dot k the angle is 90 degrees and k dot i also the angle is 90 degrees and cos of 90 degrees is equal to 0. I am writing it just like a dot b is equal to b dot a and therefore I can write that j dot i, k dot j and i dot k that is also equal to 0. So I told you that the same dot same is, e is equal to 1 and else dot else is equal to 0. This is the method I wanted you to uh, understand. Okay. Now I apply these things to a problem, a case study and just elaborate you a little bit more about what it is about. Okay. So I suggest that please go back to these lectures with vector dot product and even cross product because interestingly I must discuss with you any idea that flashes to me I always try to uh, do that that in the cross product of a vector A with say another vector B this is a plane and when I rotate my vector A towards vector B, then what emerges is a vector C, a new vector. The dot product of which C dot A and C dot B will equal to 0. Now this, if in this case we can make a parallelogram and the area, surface area of the parallelogram will be given as A B sine of theta. If I have this, then there is a vector which is coming out. So a vector can be obtained as a cross product of two vectors. A vector can be obtained by multiplying that vector. Here it is, I have done. So I was telling you how vector quantities can be obtained. One way to obtain the vector quantity is by defining the vector quantity. The velocity has been defined as the ddx or ddr. Uh, I'm sorry, dx, dr dt. Rate of change of displacement. A has been defined as rate of change of velocity. So it's easy. But for example, here. By multiplying this velocity with a something which is always positive, a mass. Of course, there is a concept of negative mass, which you will encounter. This, that has got its own strings associated with that. We learn in due course of time, pursue physics. So what I am saying is that this is one method. If Primarily we define P, multiply it by 1 upon M, then I get P. Primarily we define the force, multiply it by 1 upon M, which is the mass associated with the body, then we get the acceleration, etc, etc. 
So this is one of the methods of obtaining a vector quantity by multiplying the, a defined vector quantity by a particular scalar. This happens. And the second way to obtain a vector quantity is by interaction of two vectors A and B in the cross product. Which I define as, I told you, the cross product A cross B is a new vector C. And this new vector is such that the dot product of this vector with A or dot product of this vector with B both are equal to zero. What does that mean? That the new vector makes an angle of 90 degrees with both A and B, which I showed to you that in this case the vector will come out of the board like this. And that is why I have shown it the direction of the C cap is like this. And if it is A is taken here and B is making an angle in negative angle here, then in that case if I rotate it, okay, then my resultant vector is going to inside, which I have just shown with the cross within the circle. <coughs> okay. So uh, this is how uh, the things are done. Now I have a very challenging question, very interesting question. Uh, I like to kid with you. <coughs> okay. What is this? This is a page of A4 sheet. Okay. Now, there is a misguided statement. This is a page of a sheet. Is this one page? You think and then you find that this one page, no. This is two pages, one this side and the other this side. So if I ask you, friends, please give me a single page. Can you? The answer is you cannot. Because for this page from your side, there is a surface area associated with it which is normal to the surface. And for this side, you have, for this side, on my side, there is another uh, vector. So actually, that is why a surface is a vector quantity. Uh, an area is not. Okay. So with that, now the reason is why I have made these uh, things uh, here. Why I have told you about these things is because my work will be a dot product of two things which we have already uh, learned and that is if there is an application of force F and which results in a displacement D. Then the dot product of these two which is Fd cos of theta Fd cos of theta this is basically the work done. Okay. Sometimes we define it as f dot dx for the small amount of work done when a force is not non varying force is applied so we have f and this can be written because of my vectors that we have the component fx i cap plus Component Fy, which is not a vector, J cap plus component Fz in the z direction into K cap. Okay. And as I told you, that all these components may vary. All these components may vary. But there is there are certain things in our definition of things in the way that we have uh, built up our knowledge of vectors is that this vector i 
this vector j cap and this vector k cap. This is invariant, it will not change. It is well defined by means of the x, y and z axis. <coughs> okay, when I write this, now I am going to ask you a question. Is this equation, is this equation right? The answer is no. I have been absolutely wrong by excluding the vector sign over here. Because if there is a vector here on this side, then all the things that we write as in the equation, the homogeneity of units plus the homogeneity of uh, their status as vector has to be maintained. So the vector f is equal to fx, which is a scalar, i cap, which is a vector, so it gives a directional vector. Uh, I can write that vector as fx, vector fx, vector fy, vector z, etc. And I told you that if so, if the situation is like that, then I can write this f is square. What is f is square? f is square is f dot f. So f is square is vector f dot vector f and the angle between the two of the, them being equal to zero. This is equal to magnitude f into magnitude f into cos of zero and that will turn out to be equal to f square. So if f square turns out to be this exercise I have done before, I am just introducing to you because you may require to revise it. This is equal to fx square plus fy square plus fz square. And like this. And the vector d that I have taken over here. The vector d can similarly be written like, maybe I'm going to use another kind of pen. I can just write, you can write very easily that the displacement vector d is equal to the displacement in the direction x i cap plus displacement in the direction y, which is the magnitude only j cap plus the component in the z direction uh, associated with the unit vector which is k cap. And similarly I can write, I can write that d square, the square of the magnitude of the displacement is equal to, in a similar ma manner, I can say d dot d, d dot d and this is also equal to dx square plus and so on, dy square plus dz square. Okay. So now I can know as to what is the value of f. The value of f is equal to under root of this quantity. The value of d is under root of this quantity. We can always calculate it. And the value of f dot d what is that? The value of f dot d, allow me to do away with some of it and create some space. And the value of f dot d by the formula that I have given is equal to f dot d. Very simple. You are knowledgeable people now. This will be equal to fx dx plus fy dy plus fz dz. Okay. No i, j, k here. Okay. All, all other components in the multiplication, they turn out to be equal to zero because the angle between them, i dot j, j dot k, k dot i is equal to 90 degrees. So f dot d 
What I am going to define as the work done when a force F applies on an object and the object is displaced by a distance D is given like this. And therefore I can write this is also equal to F into D into cos of theta. So which I can write that cos of theta therefore cos of the angle theta which we don't know right now we just know these numbers fx, fy, fz, dx, dy, dz in newtons and in meters respectively so my cos of theta becomes equal to the value that we obtained for f dot d f dot d divided by uh, fd in our calculations, we can find the value of f dot d over here, okay, and the value of f and d from here under root of this plus under root of this, and we can obtain the value of cos theta. <coughs> this, of course, the maximum value of cos theta can be equal to 1, okay, it can also be equal to minus 1, other direction. So, this is one of the relations which conversely defines how if we are given with the force defined in terms of ijk uh, and d also defined in terms of ijk with their components etc we can make calculations find out the value of cos theta and uh, therefore theta you know will be equal to the cos inverse of whatever we obtain over here which we also call r time of cosine will be equal to suppose this value is uh, suppose this value that turns out to be here is equal to 5 so my theta is equal to cos inverse of cos inverse of 5 is it possible is it possible so I have made a big mistake because my cos theta cannot be equal to 5. It has maximum value of 1. Okay. So this is a very wrong thing which I have to, uh, shared with you. I am an idiot definitely and therefore you must be very careful in knowing as to what, what is here. What is here? It should be uh, between minus 1 and plus 1. So uh, definitely the next outing I am leaving you here and I am expecting from you to go through all these things plus the write-ups that the books are giving. The write-ups that the books are giving they are very very important because the concept is very very simple and simple things are always very difficult in life. So hope that you can master that. And now, to end with that, to end the things, something I, uh, I shared with you, there is a ball, there is a ball having a certain mass, okay, and I am holding this ball only because the force with which I am holding is equal to the force that is applied on this ball. The sum of the two forces is equal to zero. The earth, this room, this city, this whole world is applying a force on it. And, and therefore, when my ball is falling freely, when my ball is going to fall free, okay, you can hear a sound also. If it were a collision of the ball with the floor were elastic collision, then this ball will come up to the same height again, again, again. So the earth will be working on it and it will be working on the earth. Why? Because resulting with this fall of the ball 
is the fall of the earth towards the ball. And so the two of them are working on each other. So work is also positive and negative. We'll talk about that in the next outing. Thank you.